Hey, thanks for joining. Uh, today I want to show you how to write a crystal shard. Of course, you might be asking, uh, what is a shard? Well, a shard is just a library in, uh, in Crystal. And given the fact that Crystal 1.0 is out, now it's a great time to jump onto this new language uh, and uh, start writing something uh, with it. So today we'll look at a simple shard, just an example to guide us through the process you'll probably be following with your own um, with your own uh, software and we look at uh, how we can initialize test and publish one and how we can depend on the shard we've published and just for the sake of uh, uh, example we'll look into a shard called just config which I came up with it's a shard that substitutes environment variables into your YAML config so that you can have a rich YAML configuration uh, that make it very easy to import environment variables. But to give you a better sense of what um, this, uh, this looks like, imagine you have a config YAML file that looks like the one uh, on the screen here, and you have some special syntax to indicate that some values might be interpolated from environment variables or, or some sort of dictionary coming with that set of keys. And imagine you have a set of environment variables in this case max users and db password are defined there then the idea is our just config library will combine these two into an interpolated config uh, that just replaces uh, max users with the number 100 uh, deletes the uh, override of host with a uh, potential environment variable because such a key is not defined in our environment variable and file uh, and finally overrides uh, the password uh, um, the password key in the uh, config yaml and that's actually okay even if we have duplicate keys in the interpolated config because uh, by means of the precedence in uh, the um, uh, yaml parsing the second value is the one that will be uh, set um, so now that we have an idea of what the uh, shard should uh, uh, actually do we are ready to initialize our uh, project which is as easy as running crystal init lib just config. And now if you look at the repository, uh, at, the, at the folder structure, you will notice a shard.yaml file, which is where all the metadata around about your, your um, library lives. Uh, a couple of important keys. One is the license keys, which is important if you're uh, planning to use a particular shard in a, a work environment. The crystal um, field is also uh, fundamental because it defines the compatibility uh, with uh, any version of crystal before or after uh, 1.0. Uh, make sure you have an author section with your username at least and the ones of your collaborators. And finally, you can see there's a version uh, up here together with the name of the, of the shard. There's also room to add to adding a description which can help some of the um, uh, various shard uh, search engines uh, in index your shard a bit better so I recommend uh, taking a broader look into the shard spec which you'll uh, find in some of the references uh, I'll leave you with at the end of the video the readme file already looks all right don't mind the um, uh, spelling uh, issues uh, and as you can see you're asked to write some sort of description that's good installation uh, instruction for your users and finally uh, usage instruction instructions on how to import the library into a particular project which again we'll see in a second uh, i'll also uh, point you to the spec folder where we'll put the test for our shards and finally if we go to the uh, source folder we uh, uh, have already a module set up for us to fill that in with our core logic and that's what I'll do here uh, very, very quickly. I'll just copy paste this from uh, from my um, uh, from my clipboard and I'll, I'll remove the version constant because that's not something I tend to use much, but see, see how you feel about it. Uh, and the idea here is I'm defining an interpolate uh, method that takes in a raw config and a dictionary, like an environment variable uh, dictionary, and then iterates over each key of the dictionary and for each one of these uh, figures out defines a pattern for the uh, for the key to be replaced and runs a g sub on the configuration which is what we discussed earlier 
There's also the uh, feature we discussed where we actually kill any line uh, that has not been interpolated. So in the case of our example, uh, the uh, host uh, environment variable could not be found. And so we are removing it and uh, we'll do we'll do the same here with a G sub on any not interpolated um, uh, string. So this gets us far enough. If I now go to the uh, just config uh, specification, I'll again spare you the uh, the pain of having to uh, write the tests with me, but I'll, you can just look them up later. And now if I run crystal spec in the in the folder, you can see uh, there's going to be a complaint around the fact that just config dot interpolate doesn't exist. This is because this module should be uh, included in a particular module or class for it to be uh, callable, but we can actually uh, do something you will see very often with modules, which is to extend uh, the, the module itself so that we can actually call the function, uh, the method directly on the uh, on the module. So now that we've done this, I can run crystal spec and see all my tests uh, passing and I can now uh, git add dot and I'm ready to publish the first version of my of my library. So uh, first implementation, uh, please find a better commit message than, than I did. Uh, and now ideally what we'd want to do is we'd want to publish this to some sort of uh, uh, decentralized uh, version control, um, uh, source version control system. Now, luckily enough, that step is also going to coincide with our way of publishing the, the shard to the world. So if I now switch to my GitHub profile, I can actually define a new repository, call it just config. Um, give it some sort of description. I'm happy to mark this as public and I can skip to the next uh, step. And then because we want to push an existing repository, I'll just define the remote in my folder, switch to the main branch and then uh, push uh, to it. And I think I can just uh, paste all of this. Here we go. And, and if I refresh the page now, we have this beautiful uh, readme file that is already, you know, there's a bit of work to be done, but uh, it's already uh, good in terms of uh, structure. So it's up to us to then fill it in with some uh, good content to explain what our library is about. Now, this is it on the side of um, defining our shards and testing it. But I also wanted to show you how we go about uh, using the shard from a different project, because now that we've published it, uh, it, there's a question of how we go about uh, using this. And what I'll do is I'll cd into my favorite folder which is crystal folder where i've got all my projects and then i'll crystal init uh, app and then call a project sample project with very little fantasy uh oh that project already exists so let me just rm slash rf the sample project so that we can start from scratch Okay, cool. And then I'm run the, running this again. You can notice how I'm now initializing an app rather than a library, which is uh, which makes a difference because uh, we now want to define a standalone uh, crystal binary, rather ideally, rather than a than a library or a shard. And now, if we uh, I can actually close the terminal, open a new um, uh, a new folder here in uh, um, in Visual Studio Code and go to the shard folder. Now you can see that the source, you know, the source, the project structure is very, very similar. But in this case, uh, we will uh, actually run our code inside the sample project.cr. And the place where we go and rely on our uh, shard is actually the shard YAML uh, file. And lucky enough, if you go to your new readme file, you can find precise instructions on how to import the uh, the dependency. So I'm adding a dependencies uh, section, which is where we put all the libraries we depend on, and then mentioning the fact that we will depend on a just config uh, library, which leaves at, and this is something I need to fill in in the readme as well, which leaves at your username, uh, GitHub username slash name of the configuration. Also go a step beyond this and define the particular version of the library we want to depend on. If we now try and uh, install this uh, library with shards install, shards is the command line tool that we can use to manage dependencies in uh, our Crystal projects. 
uh, you will see that the dependency uh, cannot be satisfied. This is because uh, the resolver cannot find version 0.1 of our shard. Now, if you think about it and we go back to the repository, if we inspect the shard YAML file, uh, that does um, specify the version as 0.1.0, but actually what the uh, resolver is looking for is an actual tagged version. So what we need to do here is go into our GitHub or do this from the command line and define a version 0.1.0 as a release. I can do this uh, here and publish a release. And now that I've done this, I can go back to Visual Co Studio Code and run shard install again. And this is where uh, I managed to, um, the, the shards uh, command line tool manages to find the dependency as expected. So now that we've installed the dependencies, we can go and try to uh, use our library. So I'm going to be requiring uh, uh, just config. And imagine you have a configuration uh, defined as I can go new line, there's a db uh, namespace and then the user is defined with an optional uh, environment variable defined as user and uh, uh, maybe there's a default value which is user colon uh, admin and that's, that closes our uh, configuration. If I now try to, if I now try to uh, pretty print the configuration this looks like this so if i crystal source sample project this just uh, prints the configuration as uh, admin and then user actually let me just put it print it as put string there we go that this is this represents our you know yaml yaml configuration and now we can actually try to just config dot interpolate on the configuration and then pass in and i hope you can see this uh, say user a dictionary that maps user into some other name like albarasi for example uh, which you should be able to see on the screen and if we just try and uh, conscious you have a smaller screen uh, and if i try to now put this this should uh, look slightly different than the one we've seen before and there we go the interpretation has taken place and so we successfully imported the library and used it in a separate project which is uh, great so mission accomplished